The Campus Beautiful puts the final touches on some new additions on campus, and a statewide cultural celebration takes place at Pipestem. All this and more coming up on WMLT's first show of the fall, 2007. Hi, I'm Martin Hamrick. And I'm Erin Barnett. Welcome to WMLT Concord University's news brought to you exclusively by its students. With school year comes new additions, and for the students here at Concord, there's no shortage of brand new features. About $13 million and a few years later, and the Nick J. Ray Hall Technology Center is near completion. It was a timely process beginning back in June of 2004, but patience has certainly paid off. The building features multimedia classrooms, a new graphics design lab, and even a virtual reality lab. So far, only three offices have actually moved in the building. The computer center and housing office are located on the first floor, and the campus police office located on the ground floor. Location and accessibility of the building seem to be the biggest improvements. Other than the fact that it's a, a brand new facility and all the nice things that come with that, you know, new walls, new carpets, new everything, um, you know, the, just being here and the location of here and the accessibility or accessibility of it uh, makes it much better. And the campus police are also uh, excited about the improvements there. made in so their office. It's, it's set up better for a police department. We have uh, three, three huge offices and a uh, processing room. In addition to the construction of the new technology center, additional parking has also been added to the campus. The new parking lot is located behind Woodell Hall and holds up to 200 spaces. Concord commuters are certainly appreciative. I used to have to leave my house at like 6 in the morning so I can get here by 7 and get a good parking space, but now I can leave like two hours later and still get a good spot. And the lot seems to be staying pretty full. In Athens, I'm Aaron Barnett. The Ray Hall Center and the parking lots aren't the only new things on campus. The football team is now enjoying brand new lights for their field. The Mountain Lions played their first night game on September 8th and put up a good fight against the UVA Wise Cavaliers. We'll have more on how the players are doing with the new lights in the coming weeks. And Concord isn't the only one seeing improvements popping up everywhere. The new Beckley Center for Higher Education is not only benefiting Concord students, but students from all over public colleges and universities as well. But all three institutions were offering classes in Beckley off-site. We were renting facilities around uh, Beckley, and the thinking was that we all got together and pooled our rents. We could probably open up a center which would benefit all of our students. Classes are now being held in the building, and internet access will be available for all classes in the coming weeks. Well, it's no surprise that college students are always trying to find ways to cut corners. And we're not just talking about class. After taking a closer look, I found out that college students aren't just buying their textbooks at the campus bookstore anymore. There may be a cheaper way to make the grade. Hi, this is Arden Hamrick, and I'm standing right outside of the Concord University Bookstore, where students often go at the beginning of semesters to buy their books. Or do they? I went to Concord University's bookstore to see what they were doing to get students patronage. I worked pretty much the entire summer on developing this website. Uh, with the help of this technical guru. I'm not a website genius, uh, but I've, I've been in the bookstore business for 15 years, so I know what a website should look like for the bookstore. Well, what this website will do, instead of just having our, our textbook information out there now, students have the opportunity to purchase books online, and either pick them up here or we'll ship them to them. One way of purchasing a textbook that's been overlooked is these nice little flyers that people put up, textbooks for sale. I buy my books in the Concord University Bookstore, where they are indeed overpriced. I buy my textbooks online. I buy them in the bookstore. I buy my books online. I've been buying my books online for the past three semesters. With students buying their books online, the bookstore's new website might be a great opportunity. While the bookstore is offering many alternatives, this reporter thinks that he's going to buy his books online. Coming up after the break, we'll see how one Putnam County graduate is making a difference at home and overseas.
strange but wonderful music was playing and, and they told me that it was the, the beautiful music of Captain Laserblast. Have any clue who Captain Laserblast is? Find out next on WMLT News. Welcome back to WMLT. Since Concord's campus lies in such a small town, it can be easy to forget that there are many local activities and festivals taking place on some of the most beautiful grounds in the state. Between Pipestem and Bluestone State Parks, the Appalachian Folklife Center is a home for a wide variety of activities. Peter Fichtorn gives us a closer look. With a rainy start on September the 14th, Culture Fest began at the Appalachian South Folk Life Center. I spoke with Albert Peroni, a musician at the festival, to learn more about the purpose of the event. Just to create a, a, a nice, clear space where people can have a great time and hear a, a variety of music and sample some really good food and some products you can't get at Walmart. With two stages of music and dozens of craft vendors, Culture Fest is a continuing celebration of local and national art. You know, I've set up uh, at the last three or four Culture Fests and had a blast uh, being able to reach people with the information that I have and the products that I sell. And uh, it's just been, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Culture Fest was a blast with three days of camping and performances by over 25 bands and even belly dancing lessons. The Folklife Center is the perfect location to celebrate in. The Folklife Center is kind of a little known gem. There's a lot of people that live in the area, have always lived in the area, don't even know about it. They kind of keep a low profile. Although Culture Fest is over for another year, you can still enjoy many of the local musicians who perform there at the Riff Raff on Mercer Street in Princeton, West Virginia. Besides that, there's another local venue for musicians opening up this winter at the Chuck Mathena Center. We'll have more on that next time. For WMLT News, this is Peter Fichtorn. Concord University also had a hand in the festivities at Culture Fest. Not only did students get in on the action, but one particular member of Concord's faculty made an appearance, but definitely not in a way most students would recognize him. A recent performer at the fourth annual Culture Fest was rumored to be a professor at Concord University. I went and asked a few college students around campus if they knew anything about Captain Laserblast. Uh, I, I guess a few, uh, several years ago, uh, maybe back in 2002, when I first started coming to Concord, I've been here that long, uh, it, it was uh, some people were wearing some t-shirts and I was concerned because the t-shirts closely resembled a professor on campus. And do you by chance know who Captain Laserblast is? Well, rumor has it around school that Captain Laserblast is Dr. Mainland. I went to go see Dr. Mainland in his office. So when did you start playing your special kind of music? My Captain Laserblast music? Mm -hmm. Well, it sort of evolved over a period of time. Uh, when uh, Maggie and I started playing flute and guitar, classical music, and we were both interested in folk music, and so we started playing banjo fiddle stuff on flute and guitar, or flute and banjo. And uh, then uh, I uh, got into uh, some more about electronics because I went up to NYU and took some courses because I wanted to update my knowledge of music technology. There's no doubt that Captain Laserblast is going to take us into the future with his techno folk music. For WMLT News, this is Arden Hemrick. This year, Bluefield hosted the Nationwide Cold Expo, where coal miners and employers from all over the nation came to find out more about the most recent developments in coal mining technology. Krista Witt has more. I'm Krista Witt here at the Coal Mining Expedition in Bluefield, West Virginia, where we are talking to many, many, many companies about why they're here, their equipment, and what they plan to do for the future. There's 230 exhibitors here, 
some inside, they're all over the place. They come from Canada, from Mexico, from Colorado, from all over the place. They brought the coal miners so they could see the latest technology, they could see the safest equipment, so they could have a better understanding of what is on the horizon that's going to improve coal mining. Not only are there hundreds of exhibitors, they brought their own food and games. Let's take a look. Although there was fun to be had, we shouldn't forget what the expo was all about. This is about 230 businesses getting together to exchange ideas, to promote what they love, and to make sure it's being supported and taken care of. And this is Krista Witt from the Coal Mining Expo in Bluefield, West Virginia. And one former Putnam County student is continuing his basketball career overseas. But as Rudy Rains reports, he hasn't forgotten his roots and what made him the player he is today. It's a good thing Tim Lyle stands at a towering 6'8", because there are tons of kids looking up to him. The James Madison graduate led his former Polka High School team to a double-A state championship in 1997 and was later selected Player of the Year in West Virginia. But before the lofty titles, Lyle started off at this summer basketball camp in Polka. I've been coming to this camp since I was in first grade. I went, I went through until I got in high school and then I've been working the camp through college and then I try and come back almost every year to speak at it. Even though Tim Lyle has played professional ball overseas, he believes it's small town camps like these that really make the difference. I like to use the things God's given me and, and the platform that I have to be able to impact some kids. If they're going to look up to me or want to be have a career like mine, then I want to use that for more than just myself. I think not just playing basketball, but everything that goes on off the court more than basketball. And for me, the biggest thing in my life is having a relationship with Jesus. Thankfully, Lyle shows nice guys don't finish last. Wow, that's incredible. He can manage his time overseas and here at home and still bring his talents back to where he came from. It really is, and it's a great story, too. Well, thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to look for us again in two weeks. For Aaron Barnett and all of us here at WMLT, I'm Arden Hamrick.